cutting uh, rates is obviously challenging in this kind of environment when everyone is competing for home loans, but margins are under pressure. So banks won't want to see their margins drift down too far. They want to preserve some of that margin. And then it comes down to your strategy, right? Do you want to preserve margin? Do you want to grow market share? It really comes down to an individual bank by bank decision. I don't think we'll see at a wholesale level banks cutting interest rates just to get new customers. I think it's clear from the noises they're making, they're looking more at the moment to preserve those margins and looking forward to generating more income in kind of future periods. How have mortgage brokers upset this part of the retail business for banks? Well, it's interesting. If you go back quite a few years and you looked at the percentage that brokers made up of of new business, right, it was always around 50% or so, maybe a little bit lower. If you look at the recent set of results, Brokers are now 65% of new mortgages. That's a big jump in a small space of time. And the way that really impacts the bank earnings is, right, brokers earn an upfront commission and they earn a trailing commission over the life of the loan. And the way the banks account for that is really through their margin. Now, with brokers taking up such a big percentage of new lending, that means banks are going to be paying those brokers for a bigger portion of the loans and for a lot longer. So that's actually going to hurt earnings for a longer period of time. That's quite structural, unless something changes in consumer preferences and we see people going out of brokers and back to bank proprietary channels for their loans. But that's not clear that that will happen. So I think brokers are probably here to stay, um, and that means banks need need to factor that cost into how they think about mortgage profitability going forward. There'll be a huge expectation on the banks to pass on any rate cuts when the RBA does make them in full. Do you expect they will or will they want to hold on to some of it for their own balance sheets? Well, if you look at the history of these things, um, banks always hold on a little bit of it. And there's always a tension, right, because you'll have politicians and other commentators saying banks should pass on the full amount of the rate cut And then you just have natural competition in the market. So if one bank does pass on the full amount while some others hold it back, they might see some of those new business, new loans going to that competitor. So their decisions banks are going to have to make really as they go. I suspect they'll probably hold some back. We've seen ANZ, Westpac and NAB announce buybacks in the last week. Is this an attempt to keep shareholders happy while analysts suggest that bank stocks are indeed overvalued? Well, I think it's a combination of things. Possibly, yes, it's, it's one to appease shareholders. But two, you really have to look at where bank capital is at the moment relative what their targets are. So for actually quite a long time, the major banks at least have been running capital levels well ahead of what their stated targets are. And they're very profitable. So they keep generating new capital year on year, right? So to actually get down to your target level, you have to do either a couple of things. Either you have to grow your balance sheet really quickly which is hard to do in this environment. Or if you have this surplus capital, you give it back to shareholders. So I think the buyback is really managing the, the, the views around balance sheet growth and how you can use that capital versus where they think the capital should be given the risks. And if there's excess, then I guess the decision from a business point of view is to give that back to shareholders. Frank Morenzi, thank you. Thank you very much.